all the focus on the Fed next week. I think it's really timely that we have, well, David Williams joining us this morning from Page Trader here to help us take a look at the fundamentals behind the technicals and further the technical discussion as well. David, welcome. I want to talk about crude and just kind of dive right into it at current levels around 88 or just below that. Where does this fit into your price models and what they've been calling for? Well, good morning, Ben, and thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Uh, as you may recall, uh, since mid-July, and in particular on your August 16th program, when crude uh, closed that day at $79, our uh, public forecast was for further advance in crude uh, from 79 up to $88. So that's where the market is now. And uh, since crude has now completed the $88, I do want to say that in our technical outlook, crude remains in a very, very strong position. And generally, we believe that uh, crude longer term is likely to remain above $66. And of course, that's way down there. But we believe it's going to remain above $66. And our further expectations for crude probably take crude up to 98 to 100 dollars in the first half of next year you know as i take a look at crude oil here uh, uh say that again 93 to 98 did you say david no nine, 98 to 100 dollars wow. and the and the only reason we're saying that that is likely <clears throat> excuse me is because originally crude was not able to decline to 60 to 58 dollars mm -hmm. a number that we had given out on your program and the inability of a market to reach a technical level means there's a tremendous amount of buoyancy in the market and that buoyancy would have a very minimum target of 88 dollars which we talked about last time we're now at 88 dollars and with the usual pullbacks and and back and forth we believe it's likely that next year we will be up at 98 to 100 dollars probably in the first six months of next year you know the the word buoyancy uh, not necessarily yeah. a, a technical term when it comes to markets right i i like it in terms of describing what we're seeing here but we like to use the words like energy and conviction we're seeing to the upside right as we take a look here uh, at what we've seen in terms of crude prices also tying it to that yields discussion we've been having uh, this morning both at these elevated levels here this chart shows how they track each other very closely uh, is is that what you're seeing here? A lot of energy, a lot of conviction in this recent price activity, and that's supportive of further gains here, David, in addition mm -hmm. to the lack of ability to take out key levels to the downside? It's all of that. I mm -hmm. mean, I think you said it beautifully. Uh, those are the very reasons the words can change. But in our work, the market requires energy to move prices mm -hmm. through time. So, and that includes decline. Sometimes people will say, hey, the market declined just on gravity. But I don't believe that there's a kind of gravity in the market. The market re requires energy to move down to support levels, and it requires a form of energy to move up. So when we see the buoyancy or the energy and the conviction, and I do like the word conviction, um, that's what we saw in the inability to get down to $60 that led us to have a quite bullish outlook on crude going back into July. And that, that outlook isn't done yet. The market, by simply getting to our initial target of 88, is not a big deal. It probably has quite a bit more to go. So higher gasoline prices, higher crude oil prices, and associated things, derivative things that come from that are really probably in the cards from here forward. That energy, that buoyancy coincided with some uh, fundamental catalysts too, right? I know you focus primarily on the technicals, but we talk about the fundamentals getting us to those technical targets, those levels that mm -hmm. we look for. And that imbalance is really what's behind the recent run-up we saw, 288. Uh, we could get further uh, fundamental catalysts here this week as well. We've got the IEA, the EIA, we have OPEC. Mm -hmm. I mean, multiple focal points for investors and traders, David. Yeah, crude oil prices, uh, as we're talking, made a 10-month high last week, mm -hmm. um, driven by worries about supply mm -hmm. shortages, uh, shortages after an unexpected extension uh, by the voluntary supply cuts uh, that Saudi Arabia and Russia had given. Uh, I think further is the hopes that the Federal Reserve won't raise interest rates. There's some talk that that won't, we won't see an increase this time when they're in the upcoming uh, rate increase, uh, supposedly. But maybe we don't get that rate increase. That also is bullish, both for probably the S&P and the Dow and the indices, along with crude oil. So I agree with you. There's plenty here to make a case for buoyancy, energy, and conviction in this market.
taking a look here at some of the recent price activity. Actually, that's the chart that I was going to pull. Uh, if we could pull mine, though, because it's got that left side of the screen marked pretty well, where you can see the double top up here around 93, 94. That's the highs from last year, this time, well, October, November uh, of last year. And you can see the run-up we've seen from the May lows down around 63, 64, a bit of a double bottom. So range bound here right now, but working our way through the middle of it and not necessarily what you want to see. Just taking a quick look at where we are, bigger picture here off the highs that we saw up around 130 in 2022, the war in Ukraine and how we've come off that upper level, but kind of bottoming out here right now and finding support again around the 60, 65 level. We've seen production cuts. We've seen OPEC. I just want to show where we are in terms of the Brent contract because this is the global benchmark inching its way also up to 91 and that double top from last fall is up around 99, 100. It seems like we've got kind of that psychological level, the level you mentioned before, 100, where everybody's kind of eyebrows raise up a little bit and uh, kind of their, uh, you know, awareness starts to be a bit heightened. Talk to us about uh, how, speaking of awareness heightened with prices at these elevated levels, I'd imagine this is not necessarily what Europe wanted to see headed into this winter or further advances for that matter, David? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when the gasoline fill up at the station starts costing more than 100 to $110 from really an empty That's tank. That's when we really you know, start to notice, yeah. We really are going to start to notice that because uh, so many people are buying SUVs. You know, that's the most mm -hmm, popular mm -hmm. vehicle. Uh, aside from the Ford F-150, which may be more popular for whatever its reasons are, but most consumers really like SUVs. Those those have sizable tanks in them, and it is going to really be something when everybody is paying $100 to fill up, and it becomes a much bigger deal for people because that's a that's a real imposition on the average person's uh, income and yeah. outgo. Uh, so, w you know, we'll see. But I do think we have much higher prices coming generally speaking, and that energy and that conviction remains in the market. And uh, I would not expect, uh, aside from the usual kinds of declines that we get, I would expect that the market remains in an obvious technical uptrend. David, any other products you have on your radar or any other levels you're keeping an eye on in the indices or natural gas yes. or any of the other commodities you watch? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, since early July, we made a longer term two-step forecast for the S&P, which was that in August, the S&P would decline to at least 4450 or lower. But at the end of August, if they closed above 4450, which we have, mm -hmm. then we would move up to 4570 in September. So we are forecasting that the market, as long as it remains above 4450, we should move up in September or slightly beyond to the 45, 70 to 80. And then finally, a third step to that is that if the market cannot break out to new highs this year, and we're not forecasting that it will, we're saying if it doesn't, then we are expecting a, as early as November or slightly beyond a decline to 4300s, the low 4300s, mm -hmm. and even 4230 into early next year. And this would be a decline that occurs prior to the elections. So we would have a sizable decline into the uh, elections, not terrible, but down into the 4200s. And then they would firm up and we would have the more standard election rally uh, somewhere in there as we get past the early part of next year. Well, that would in some ways kind of make sense, right? I can see the indices mm -hmm. advancing to 4570, but holding short of that high that we saw back in July up around 46, especially yeah. if we were to see crude inch its way back up to 100, that could potentially be the driving force to send mm -hmm. the indices back down to that 43 level that you were talking about. Yeah, you and I have talked so many times about crude and the S&P running mm -hmm. together, but mm -hmm. there are times where they diverge. Absolutely. And at that time of divergence, crude may have already reached $100. I'm mm -hmm. not forecasting mm -hmm. that here, but just saying it may be due for some decline on its own anyway. Uh, we'll see how it works out, but that's this is a little unusual for us. We have a two-step forecast for S&P, and one step of it's already been done with the 4450, if we stay above that 4570 in September, and then as early as November down at the low 4300s, and then early next year, even down to 4200 or lower. If they firm up there, it's going to be a great buy in the S&P. All right, lots to watch here, uh, not only in terms of these products individually, but combined as well. We oftentimes focus on the relationship between the two, and uh, as uh, to your point here, David, um, uh, these products track each other very closely, not necessarily silly tick for tick, but oftentimes yeah. the narrative is very similar one in terms of demand. David Williams joining us this morning from Page Trader. Appreciate you starting your week with us here on the Schwab Network.